Wake up with the news and information you can trust. Starting your day the right way with the Andy Griffin Show. This is News Radio 890 92.5 KDXU. Good morning, everybody. It's 912 on KDXU. Thanks to Joe for hanging out with his advanced windows. We're going to hear from him in a little while as well. Right now, I've got Celeste Malloy in studio, looking fantastic as always. Celeste, how are you? Thank you. I'm doing well this morning. Appreciate you coming. I, to be honest, I thought you were going to call today. I didn't know you were going to actually grace us with your presence. Very cool. I, I had it on my calendar as a call-in, but radio just goes better when you can see each other. Agreed. Agreed. little body language and, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, un, unvocalized cues and things like that. So. Otherwise, we end up talking over each other and it gets yeah, weird. yeah. I guess it's Red Day. Nanette is here, too. We're going to talk with Nanette in a few minutes. Uh, Hurricane City, the mayor, uh, and she's wearing red, and you're wearing a kind of a burgundy red. Yeah. And I've got a red shirt. Stockton, you got the wrong color on, dude. What's what's going on there, dude? You are not dressed for the occasion, man. It's family picture day, and you didn't I, wear the right color. I mean, I... I do you have anything red in the car or something that you could get? Or? I don't like confrontation. <laughs> he does. He doesn't. That's true. All right, uh, Celeste. Appreciate you coming on. Tell us a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I tried to do a little research on this new thing that you've introduced, and I was like, oh, there's not a lot out there. But tell yeah. us about it. Well, luckily you have the experts sitting right here. I do. Yes. <laughs> thank goodness. So what it is is a an opportunity to improve the way we do permitting. Okay. Um, I talk about this all the time, but we have all these processes you have to go through with the federal government, and they take so long. Right. And red tape. Yeah, and they're like my shirt. <laughs> yeah, red like everybody's wearing except Stockton. <laughs> um, and there aren't really deadlines on most of these permits, and so yeah. you're kind of at the mercy of whose desk it lands on. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes it's not anything malicious, even just the person takes a long time or they're not sure what to do so they drag their it's, feet it's a low priority on their their yeah. agenda and they don't yeah they don't yeah. and sometimes you get someone who just ideologically is opposed to something like Dude. say a road in washington county a and, certain <laughs> corridor yeah. north of town and <clears throat> and then it just never happens because you know there's always another another layer or when i was working for the county a lot of times we'd call to check on these permits and they'd say well it's sitting on somebody's desk in washington dc oh they don't know who um, so what we did, I worked with a bunch of former interior people, Department of Interior people, and we came up with this idea of a permit by rule, which most people are actually pretty familiar with because that's how most local government permits work. Um, so you'll have a list of the substantive requirements to get a permit. And when you give the agency all of the things on that list, they've got 30 days to review it. And if they don't throw up any red flags, you get your permit. So mm. it streamlines it for them. It puts some some timelines in place it just unclogs that pipeline so what the bill does right now is it doesn't require permit by rule it requires the agencies to look through all the permits they issue and say which ones are eligible for permit by rule which ones would make sense and then they've got a year to put that in place so instead of like if you're trying to build a highway instead of just submitting an application and then waiting to find out what happens you would do all of the environmental reviews this isn't a way to shortcut any of it but just a way to know when you've met the requirements and for the agency to know when you've met the requirements so that they can say yep we'll issue the permit instead of it taking years literally well, well you and i a friend of ours zach renstrom yeah is i, I can't tell you how many times he's come on my show and talked about well we're waiting for yeah. you know the government the, the feds to to process that especially when it comes to the environmental studies and stuff like yep. that so this is an effort to like you said maybe not go around this stuff but expedite it a little bit yeah a lot hopefully and the thing especially with like what zach's talking about so i worked for him for a little while on permitting mm-hmm. and the the thing that's really frustrating about all this red tape is that taxpayers are paying for both sides of it so you've got an entity that's doing all of the environmental studies and doing all the work and and trying to get a permit and then you've got the federal government on the other side saying we want more studies or we're just sitting on this or we're not ready to issue the permit and taxpayers are paying for both sides of that process while the pipeline is getting more and more expensive because things get more expensive over time yeah, and, and, and you know, in private business, that would that would never fly. To just well, I'm in the back burner that and never talk about it again, or wait a year, or wait yeah. three years, or wait have two thousand pages of of, of of study or whatever. So uh, it's good to see. I, I it seemed like to me, Celeste, you're it, this is an effort to say, hey, this timeline stuff really matters. Yeah, it, it, you know, like it would with a real business. Yeah, because sometimes the feds are very unrealistic. <laughs> 
Well, and, you know, we pay for a lot of government. We should be getting a lot more out of it. And this is a way of trimming down a lot of that bureaucracy and red tape. You don't need as many people to review something if you have, you know, substantive requirements and the applicant can say, I've met all of these requirements. You don't need six people sitting in six different offices to to sit around and decide whether this is adequate. Now they know it's adequate. Yeah. So we can cut down on the time. We can cut down on the number of people involved. I mean, it's just, it's a time-saving and a, a money-saving thing for everybody involved. Can you give us some examples of, of some of the, where this would apply? You said it doesn't isn't necessarily going to apply to everything, but yeah. what, what are some of the things that would apply to and some that maybe it would not? Yeah, so it could apply to a lot of the things that we're kind of used to, like road maintenance. A lot of times in Utah, maintaining a road requires getting permission from a federal agency because a lot of our roads go across federal land. Yeah. Um, and so those are the kind of things that they could say, if you've done this, this, and this, then you can go out and maintain the road. You can run a grader across a dirt road or whatever. It may not apply to really complicated, novel things that have never been done before. Okay. It might. Um, there, you know, EPA uses it for some of their processes and EPA deals with some pretty complicated things, but that's what we want the agencies to do. Sit down and think through, do we need to have all of these be a, a new process every time? Or could we say, this is what we require and let the public see that. I mean, it's, it's more transparent as well. We love transparency. Just had yes. a window, window guy on. He's, he loves transparency yeah. too. So, <laughs> all right. Um, what, what are so? What's the process now with this bill that you introduced? What, I mean, is are we, is this something that's going to take a while? Ironically, uh, probably. So we, I introduced it, recognizing that this administration is probably not going to be really forthcoming about finding mm. things that they could be more efficient about. We're really teeing this up for the next administration because I think in a year. Trump's going to be the president again. And I worked with his former secretary of interior on this bill. And I think we can get a lot of things streamlined in that scenario. So we're starting the process now. I think I had 13 co-sponsors at introduction. And what we're doing is making it so that we can get some things done probably a year from now. So the process is now that I've introduced it, it'll get referred to a committee. But because permitting touches so many things, it'll probably get referred to more than one committee. Mm. So it'll have to go through the committee process. So I'll be busy. My staff will be busy working with these committees, making sure they understand where we're headed Um, because committees always like to try to fiddle with things. Um, (laughs) So we'll have to make sure they're not doing that. And then after it gets through committee, then it can go to the floor for a vote. Seems like uh, a little dose of common sense in the federal government is, is, uh, is needed. Yeah. So, And I think everyone agrees that it's needed, but someone has to say, Here's a pathway to do it. That's yeah. what we're trying to provide. Nice way to provide a pathway. That's awesome, Celeste. I appreciate it. Uh, we actually cannot talk uh, much about the election uh, at, at this point, but congratulations on on getting President Trump's endorsement. Thank you. That's, that's that was cool. exciting. So, uh, Celeste, thanks for coming in today, and uh, I, we're gonna we're gonna let Nanette talk here for a few minutes now and, and okay. talk a little bit about Hurricane City. But it's sure great to talk to you. You too. I will yield to the mayor of Hurricane. Thanks for <laughs> having me on. Very good. She's. Great job of explaining the permitting process and what your proposal, and we need it. We need transparency, and we definitely need to have the permitting process efficient. So, thank you. Thank Thank you, you. Appreciate it. All right, uh, let's. uh, Yeah, we're not even going to take a commercial break. We're just going to go to the other red. Uh, Nanette, uh, thank you, Celeste. See you later. She has. uh, She knows that I really love Dr. Pepper. So she always has a Dr. Pepper and toast. I think she loves it as much as I do. So. And I don't know if you knew this, Nanette. This is this has nothing to do with Hurricane or anything like that. But Dr. Pepper has become the number two mo- uh, number two top selling soda pop in the world after Coke, passing wow. Pepsi. Wow! So, I'm from Texas. That's where te- Dr. Pepper is from, and uh, I, I'm kind of proud of that. They have a couple of new flavors. Have you tried them? <laughs> I have. I have. Yeah. So. So I used to be hard. No, I only want original. I'm not having. And then I started trying some. I like the strawberries and cream one. That is really good. The uh, coconut. I think it's coconut cream or something mm-hmm. like that. It's is pretty good. I like the strawberries and cream one better. But yeah, now I'm kind of like, yeah, let's go. I, do, you, do you try them occasionally? I try. I've tried yeah. those, and they're nice. really good. The cherry and the coconut mm-hmm. cream and the strawberry and cream. They're very good. Good stuff. So, yeah. all right, let's talk about Hurricane a little bit. First of all, thank you for coming in. And sorry about the I'm mix so up happy last to be week. Here. No, uh, it's yeah. all good. 
We're, we're here now. So, yeah, started this morning at 7 a.m. meeting Ooh. with, I know, we have some really good things happening. We are building a Veterans Memorial Park. And so exciting. Um, we were meeting with Kenworthy Signs because they had said they were going to donate some things for us. And so we're ordering some granite and getting those ready. And then we just barely had a pre-construction meeting. We have a contractor that is donating his time. And then we have four electricians, wow. four plumbers. They're all donating their time. That's amazing. Yeah, two contractors that are going to do the, the concrete work. We have Interstate Rock that's donated all the asphalt and laying it down and the concrete, 200 yards of concrete. They just, they had family members that have served in the military and they want to honor them. We have people that are, um, other contractors are going to put up our pavilion. A couple of different landscape companies are coming in to help with landscaping. Everybody. I mean, when you look at a park and what it takes, we have all of those good people in our community that said, I'll help with that. Even site work, like Dennett Construction is helping us with site work. We're just, I'm just so, so grateful. Yeah. We have a lot of good people. So that's what we've been doing this morning for the that, last two hours. <laughs> that's a pretty awesome project. Yeah, tell tell us, may, maybe give us some deets on it, some, uh, where it's located, how big it's going to be, okay. what is going to be in the park. Yeah, so it's if you're going towards Leverkin from Hurricane, mm-hmm. so if you're headed north on SR9. Okay, we got the big old canyon there. Exactly, right before the bridge going to Leverkin, mm-hmm. you're going to turn at the last light at 500 north. You'll turn, which is going to be going to the west. Mm-hmm. Um, and our city cemetery is about a block off there. It's right before the city cemetery, just there on the north side of the road. And there's about a oh, half acre right there. Okay might be an acre it's between half and one acre and we are building a veterans memorial park right there we're putting the branches of the military air force marine coast guard national guard space Ar- army navy, army, navy. Yeah. yes all of all. it and so we're going to have flags for each of those branches and then we're memorializing by putting anyone that has served that went to high school in hurricane and then joined the military or moved to the area and served since then, you know, like they served and then moved there. But anyone from Leeds, Hurricane, Leverkin, Tokerville, Springdale, Rock, not Spring, Springdale, Rockville, Virgin, Apple Valley, Hilldale, anyone on the east side of the county, their name can be put on our memorial because their kids went to Hurricane High School or they shop in Hurricane. We are, and there's no Veterans Memorial Park on the east side of the county. And this is our our memorial for our veterans just to say thank you have a space that we can have a flag raising some type of a memorial if they're going to have like a cemetery type of a memorial or veterans day or Reese across america that we can actually have the event right there that's so very it's cool. going to be awesome there's going to be some i i imagine down the down the road uh, over the years there's going to be some very cool events honoring veterans right yeah. there in hurricanes veterans memorial park very cool there's some really beautiful memorial parks around our community mm-hmm. cedar city has an amazing one commissioner um paul cousins took me and a couple of the commissioners from from Kane County, and we went and saw their new memorial, and it is amazing. And then I've gone to a couple others, Tonquin. I mean, we've got some really good memorials around here. Mm-hmm. We just don't have anything on the east side, so we said we need this. We need it. And yeah, we've got some good. Let's do it. Yeah, some good um, donors that are just helping us. You with said that. most of the work is going to be volunteer work. Oh yeah, not right. even just the work. Like we've that's what we've been raising money, and all of it is just being paid for by people that have donated. Mm-hmm. Incredible. Yeah. I love the way people, yeah, Yeah. people step up. It's been awesome. And And they can still donate at Hurricane City, and we will put their name on there. If they give us $500, we'll put their name on the donor board. Also, um, if they want to make sure that they put their veteran, we have a QR code right in our city office and coming out on our newsletter again. They can just snap it and register their veteran, and we want to make sure we have names on there of the people that serve. So that's What's what's the target date for, for uh, finishing this? September 11th, we're wanting to have the majority of it done. Our okay. monuments won't all be done. They'll, we're hoping to have those done by by um, Veterans Day. It just takes longer to get the granite. And so we're it's very expensive and kind of a time process to get. You know how long it takes to get a headstone at a cemetery. That's how long yeah. it takes to get heads, I mean, get granite made for these memorials. So we're hoping by Veterans Day that we can actually do the... Um, the whole ribbon cutting, but we're going to just serve. We're doing a project on September 11th, so we are going to be pretty close, except for our memorial. 
to memorialize him. Are we going to are we going to have a big uh Shindig to we do are when on it, just serve on September 11th. We're doing okay. one, and on November 11th, hopefully, <laughs> okay. that's the, that's the day. day. Or it will be Reese Across America on the 17th of December. We'll just move it if we have to, but we're waiting for those monuments to get here so we can have that. Then. Okay, so again, if you're look, if, if you want to know where this Veterans Memorial Park is going to be, if you, it's right before you get to the canyon and the bridge, and to go into La right next to our cemetery, and right next to Hurricane Cemetery. Yes. Yeah. So cool. I, I love when people step up like that. It's just amazing. We have an amazing community here in we Washington do. County. Yeah. Oh, in fact, um, the general contractor, Ted Dutton, he started to cry today during our pre-construction meeting. He said, I am so moved by the 35 people in this room that are willing to donate their time and help with this project. It's incredible. And it was yeah. amazing. Yeah. And very tender because when you look at it and you have maybe an uncle or your grandpa or your brother, I mean, I have a brother that served. I have a grandpa, uncle. I've got lots of brother-in-laws, yeah, nephews. Yeah. I'm just so grateful. So grateful. My father-in-law, he served as a Marine. I'm just, the, the list is endless of who has protected, defended, and supported our, our constitutional rights. I'm just so grateful. One of the cool events on Veterans Day is, uh, I know this isn't in Hurricane, but at Pineview High School, I don't know if they still do it, but they used to have the band come and they would play for the veterans. It was a Veterans Day concert and they would play the theme song to each branch of the service. And when they play the song, they would encourage members that had served in that branch of the service to stand up so during the song. And it was like, it, it, seriously, it was like, I'm getting chills right now. You know what I mean? I mean, that, that's, that's, how, that's how amazing it was. And, all those people that served. And it wasn't just men, men and women, too. Yeah. And, uh, We're going to yeah. have a great celebration, I swear. It's going to be great. It, it will be great. And a, and a new park. And Is it going to be, like, kind of describe the, the, the park in general. Is it going to be, like, so a, a big, big grassy area? Or? There will be a grass area with a pavilion. So we'll okay. have a place. Um, and, like, Darren Bradshaw, he's going to build our pavilion. He's built a pavilion at our splash pad. He's going to build this pavilion. Our, you know, the funds are paying for it, but he's going to come in and with his crew and build it. So we have those kind of things. There is a grass area. We've got a couple of landscape companies, Dave Peterson, Skylar Spenlove. They're helping with the landscaping. Mm-hmm. So there is a grass area, but the majority, it's there's going to be a big star in concrete. Nice. And then we're going to have all the branches, the military flags around the outside with the monuments. And then the inside, oh my goodness, we're... We're trying to decide all the things that we want. We've got a couple of really great, like a kneeling soldier, an eagle. We've got some statues that we're wanting to get, some really beautiful things that we're going to put here. We have a 125-foot flagpole that was donated to us from Scott Nelson from Jellystone. And 125 feet tall flagpole is huge. And that's going to be on the east side of the... So it's just going to be a great, a great park. Has a little bit of parking, a couple of bath. Oh, I think there's four bathrooms, which we don't have any bathrooms at our cemetery currently. So this will really enhance nice. having bathrooms. We're talking with Nanette Billings today, mayor of Hurricane City and the new Veterans Memorial Park. That is uh, is uh, really the process is underway. It's going. And we're hoping it's done by, at the very least, at the end of the year for sure. Yep. So, Wake up with the news and information you can trust. This is the Andy Griffin Show on News Radio 890, 92.5 KDXU, Southern Utah's News Talk Leader. Welcome back. I'm Andy Griffin. Thanks again to Celeste Malloy for being on for a couple minutes talking about her permitting process. And Nanette Billings is with me right now, the mayor of Hurricane City. Nanette has been mayor now for what? Oh, I've got to turn the right mic on. I might want to do that. There we go. Yep, two and a half years. Two and a half years. All right. And uh, you got it down to a science now? <laughs> I am learning. <laughs> How's that? I still quote you all the time when I talk to other mayors. I'm like, yeah, and then Ann Billings always says, it's not a part-time job. It's not a full-time job. It's a all the time all job. All the time job. You got yeah. it. So, uh, and, and I guess I guess it really is. I mean, when you think about it, and you know more than anyone, uh, people don't call Nanette anymore. They call the mayor now, you know, and, and have things to talk about with the mayor, about the city. And uh, how often does your does your cell phone ring with regular all day, day citizens? Does it all day long? <laughs> phone calls, emails, and texts all day long. One of the things, too, is, and, and we're in, I don't want to call it a drought right now, but we're, we're in a dry spell. 
Uh, haven't had rain for a little while, uh, but when it rains, a lot of times in our southern de- our, our our high desert here, it rains hard and fast. And I know uh, Mayor Randall's talked about this. When it rains really hard, she gets it, her and her husband get in her truck and they start driving around town and looking. All, they know the trouble spots and they they go. Do you do the same thing when when something like that happens? So we only have a couple of those trouble spots, and let me just tell you, we're on the bluff, so we're high. And well, so the river's view. below us. Okay. Yeah, so we're really not having the same kind of issues as St. George okay. because of where we're at below the Virgin River. But we do have Gulls Wash, Frog Hollow that can be problematic. And so, yes, we know where those areas are. And, yes, I do drive around. My husband loves that kind of thing. Absolutely. <laughs> He's a... He really does like he, it. He really oh, okay. does. He actually went out into in geology when we were in college, and he can look at a place topographically and go, "We that could hold a reservoir, or we could hike from here over to here over to here and get where he wants to go." He's really good at that kind of a thing. So yeah, he loves he loves to see, and he follows the weather every day. He is a yeah. or all day long, I should say. He looks at it and goes, "Oh yeah, it's too windy to do that," or. <laughs> No, oh, it's perfect. That's Let's nice. go golf. Good job, Willie. <laughs> we love it. Yep. We love it. Um, yeah, my, my dad, by the way, is a, was a geology professor yeah. and also a meteorologist. And so he was, he's kind of the same thing, always into that stuff. Yep. So me, I wanted to follow sports. I'm like, yeah, dad, you do the science stuff. I'm going to do the sports stuff. <laughs> he likes so, that too. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to ask you something in, in, while I was talking about my dad, it slipped my mind. So, uh, but, uh, oh, oh, I remember what I was going to ask about. How has this, I, I, I'm curious about this. Jellystone is open now. It is. Uh, how has that impacted Hurricane City? Is it, is, is, I'm, I'm assuming it's been a positive for the most oh, part. Yeah. 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 A lot of good people have come in to stay at their park. They brought their RVs in. Um, I know they've opened it up to some day use. The challenge is if their park's full, they don't have the parking. And so I know they're trying to work on that, either putting yeah. it outside another parking lot, because right now their parking is just internally in their park. So you have to stay there to go to the park. But I know that they're working on that. I know that's a real challenge. I, I think that maybe they didn't, they underestimated the fact that Southern Utah really wanted something like that for our right. residents. And right. and so they built it for people to come in from out of town. And now they're realizing, oh, wait a minute, people here really want to play on our slides yeah. and play in our lazy river and, 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 and things like that. But, but like you said, right now the park is not set up that way yeah. to have people just come there for days. The other thing too is, I think McCray Hepler was talking about this a little bit, is the fact that um, if you fill the park full of people from Hurricane Washington, St. George, et cetera, Perfect. then when someone comes to stay there and the park's full of people already, you know, uh, using everything, that's less attractive to someone that might be coming in from out of town. So they've got to balance that as well and figure, right. figure out how to make all that work. So uh, it's kind of fun, though, out there. Did you, uh, years ago, so let's say 15, 20 years ago, envision what, that part of a uh, hurricane would become with the San Hollow Reservoir and the, and of course the Jelly Stone and what's happening out there, all the, all the condos and buildings and golf course. And, and I mean, wow. I'm actually surprised there's not a gas station there yet. Yeah, really? Because the last 20 a years Maverick. that we've Where's, been What's Maverick there, doing? What are they I doing? Said, yeah, I, and there are some plans for a gas station. But I'm just saying when you ask about envisioning that, even 20 years ago when Sand Hollow opened up, my husband said, there's going to be a Maverick or a gas station. Yeah, there's going to yeah. be a Chevron or he had named some things. It's going to be right here. And just as... As it grows out, it will have something, but you just see the the need for your commercial to be in that commercial area. By the way, I don't know, you probably know this, but maybe some people don't. There is a 7-Eleven in southern Utah, folks. It's not in St. George. It's not in Ivan's. It's not in Washington. It's not in Santa Clara. It's, it's in Hurricane. It's in Hurricane. There's one 7-Eleven anywhere south of, I don't even know, when the, maybe Salt Lake or Provo. Maybe. I, I can't think of another 7-Eleven anywhere south of Utah County except for in Hurricane, right? there. We on had one before, and it was on 200 East and um, State, okay. and then Maverick bought it out and became a Maverick right there. Then Maverick sold and built their new Maverick, and the 7-Eleven became 7-Eleven right there where the McDonald's with is the, at with 11 the McDonald's, 50, yeah. Yep, 1150. 
So if you are like me and you have to have a Slurpee every once in a while, just every, I, I don't need one every day or every week even, just every few weeks I want a Slurpee, so I find myself driving to Hurricane. Nice. Uh, and maybe, you know, San Hollow would be a little closer for me. Maybe if we can get a, talk right. somebody into opening a Sev. We call this the, the familiarity, the yeah. Sev. Yeah, I'm going to go to the Sev and get a Slurpee or a Big Gulp. Yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, guilty pleasures, Nana. Sorry about well, that. Well, and I just tell yeah. people, I, when people ask about city doing something like that, I said, well, the city does not build <laughs> Cracker Barrels or 7-Elevens <laughs> or whatever, but the permitting's there and the zoning's there. And so it is permitted to do that type of a business. And so we want people to come in and open their businesses and have their businesses on our corridors. Can you explain to me, and I don't know if you have any of these, but I know St. George has done some, Washington City has done some, The R, I think it's RFQ they called it, uh, and, and how the city, well, the city, like you said, doesn't build private enterprises or private properties, right. but you can request for people to come and bid out and, and, and build in a certain area, right? Is that how that works? Or? Well, not necessarily. The RFQ is if the city's going to build something, so they have to be qualified. And so the RFQ is you're going out for qualifications so you can make sure that the businesses that are going to submit their bid okay. are qualified. And once you've qualified someone and said, oh, yeah, they're qualified, then you can negotiate the price of what you're going to have them build. And so you can have many different companies. Like, for example, if there's an emergency, I know like the Washington County Water Conservancy District, if there's an emergency, they have several companies that they've already done the qualifications. So they can just call them and say, hey, can you bring your back load? your front you know your front loader or whatever yeah. your excavator over here fix this and they can do that because they're already qualified and then after call and and during an emergency you don't have to say oh who can we do it because you want to yeah. you want to make sure that it's with government you want to give everyone the opportunity it's not based on oh you're my friend and i'm in an emergency pinch and i'm going to pay you four hundred dollars an hour because it's an emergency right. there's a specific dollar figure associated with that and what they can charge you even though it's an emergency and so those are the qualifications you want to say they're qualified and now we've decided a price if it's an emergency and then it's reasonable and so all of it is just based on having the qualifications okay what about like a piece of land though if a piece of land that the city owns becomes available uh, can you <clears throat> if you're maybe going to sell that land and let it be privately developed can you at least kind of maybe have a little bit of a say as a government on what type of business could come in there you know if it, you don't sell it once it's someone else's they can decide to do whatever they want well okay. not whatever they want it's based on zoning right the zoning. so sure. based on whatever it's zoned for that's what they can there so they're you can call it say the entitlement is based on zoning okay and if it's zoned for that then sure. yes they can Sure. And I, I, yeah, that's what I meant when I said whatever they want. Yeah. If it's a commercial zone, they can put whatever commercial mm -hmm. thing. And they, there's they certain. There. I mean, within commercial, there's several things that you can do with commercial. So people can pick what they want to commercially put on there. But then there's some things that they can't. There's some things that are only permitted in like an industrial area and not just a highway commercial. And there's different things for a neighborhood commercial that can't be put in a highway commercial area and so like that do you ever anticipate uh, an adult type shop uh coming into you know ever you know coming in and, and trying to get a <laughs> anticipate permit anticipate it no but do, i mean do you think that'll happen though I mean, do you think someone eventually know. is going to come and say hey we want to put in a you know an adult bookstore or an that's adult. a good question yeah. i know that there's been many people and i've helped with the picketing so i know that there's many people that would be very against that and we have a council right now that would be very supportive of of and you can't say no to those things that's one of the things is if you have you have it's america yeah. yeah you have places like that and so would you have the support of your community i don't know it's but as far as the council permitting it, it's not a per, it's not a permit issue. It's based on you live in the United States of America. You have certain right. laws, and that's something that would be permitted in certain areas. <laughs> I, I thought this was interesting. It, it kind of somewhat related. In the state of Louisiana, they passed a bill. It passed yesterday yeah. to uh, 
require all classrooms in the state of Louisiana to have a poster-sized posting of the Ten Commandments. And I know a lot of folks, and, and you know, I'm religious, a lot of folks are like, yay, that's awesome, they're going to have to put the Ten Commandments in. And my answer to them is kind of the converse. So as much as I like having the Ten Commandments in schools, I think it's a great idea. Forcing them to do that is kind of a dangerous precedent because what if someone else comes along that is a Satan worshiper or someone else that, that comes along and says, well, we all should, we should teach our ch- children about transsexualism or whatever. Well, I want the same right that these people that wanted to put the Ten Commandments in the school as well. I mean, it's only fair. They got to do it. Why can't I do my thing? And, and that's the kind of thing that scares me a little bit is government saying you must. Yeah, well, and government really can't say you must. That's a, that's, that is part of the Constitution, yeah. is that people have rights, especially with freedom of speech, or there's certain... Now, like when you were asking about zoning or permitting of something, like an mm-hmm. adult bookstore or something like that, there's, as long as it's legal, like if somebody wanted to bring in a marijuana shop... It's not legal, so no, they can't. Right, right. But if they want to bring not in a vape shop, right. <laughs> but if they want to bring in a vape shop, it's legal, so they can. But the, where they can put it is very limited because of our zoning. And our zoning specifically said it can't be here and here and here, yeah. close to a school. school to, yeah. and, and so you regulate it through the, through your zoning. All right, you got a text for you, Nanette. Uh, ask uh, Nanette what the plan is for 700 West. They're putting in 40,000 homes at Copper Rock. We have a one-lane bridge on 700 and 400 South. What is the plan with that? So we are expanding that. We're looking to put a roundabout right there over that bridge and expanding the bridge that will have a a bigger bridge but yeah we are expanding it but well and this is the crazy thing about (laughs) expanding roads you're always all the way from 600 north to 3000 south now Mm -hmm. we actually have one connection in town and that is the new connection we just opened up from the roundabout at 100 north to 600 north connects that completely from 600 north to 3000 south so if people want to come off the 600 north and go all the way to 3000 south and get on the parkway the southern parkway with the sr7 now they can and you can go all the way through the city but yes that road is we are looking to expand it better. all right you heard it here first she's nanette billings we're going to take a break be back with more on the andy griffin show after this all the latest news weather traffic and sports just like you like them you're waking up with the andy griffin show on news radio 890 92.5 kdxu southern utah's news talk leader welcome back as always you can call into the show if you'd like at 673-5890 and of course that's 435 area code or you can text me at 467-5842 we always love to hear from folks talking with Nanette Billings today, who is the mayor of Hurricane, the all the time mayor of Hurricane City for two and a half years now. Uh, what, what do you think of the election? <laughs> What's going on right now? Uh, first of all, as, a, as an elected official, it's got to feel pretty good to know I'm not, I don't have to worry about that this time around. Uh, but, but still, it is kind of crazy sometimes. Yeah. Elections are... Sorry, I did the wrong mic again. I'm used to people being on my bad. Go ahead. Elections, they're hard. It is. It's hard. It's, yeah. And you can feel, I mean, emotionally because someone's attacking you personally. But I feel like there can be a lot of civility in election if you will allow it. Mm -hmm. It does not have to be about the person. It's about an issue. You should make it about policy. I may disagree with someone on their policy and not vote for them, and I like the person. Right. And I think that's okay. You can look at an issue and say, what do I want to stand up for? And um, I'm not trying to pick people out, but I'm just saying that's that's kind of the, yeah. the thing that I have to recognize when – I I met with Celeste in December, and I was frustrated with her vote. And I actually talked to her, and I said, Celeste, why did you vote? I I am not against transgender people, but I don't want my tax dollars paying for it. Right. I'm not against a, I'm I, I'm not going to support abortion, but I'm not against if somebody went and did that. That's on them. 
but I don't want my tax dollars paying for yeah. abortion. Yeah. FISA, I don't want to continue spying on American citizens. I don't feel like that my tax dollars should do that. And so that's what I would – I think that you can have those conversations and be civil with people, talk about issues, and it's not about – an individual person and you're not to call their children ugly or whatever all those things <laughs> yeah. is just this is the issue and so those are the things we should talk about uh, the, the how one people th- vote yeah I, I agree with you the the one thing though is it seems like often it does get dragged kind of into a personal thing and 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 that has convinced me in five years plus of doing this show that i i don't ever want to run for, i don't know how you guys do it because uh, some very not nice things are said uh, about yeah. people. And things that aren't true either. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. For sure. Yeah. Well, and and I think when you look at it and you just go back to policy, and it, it is frustrating when she's talking about permitting with the federal government, there's also another thing, and it is lumping everything together. Because when you put a bill forward, and that's one of the reasons that I talked to her about those three things specifically, because she said, well, I, we have to fund the military. And I went, hmm. Not if you have everything that's bad. I said, she says, but we have to fund the military. And I said, I want to ask you a question. If somebody made you a batch of brownies and they put one tablespoon of dog poop in it, do you, <laughs> do you want to eat the brownie? That's the question. So uh, then you have to go, yeah. okay, do I not want brownie at all? No, I don't. And so do I want this? No, I don't. So let's let's take out the dog poop. Let's like remove the things that we don't want in something. And that's where it comes down for me in policy rather than like not against a person. It's just about policy. Yeah, I understand. By the way, it reminded me of a story from my youth. Uh, uh, the the youth group that I was in, the girls were always baking stuff, yeah. and then the guys would, you know, how guys and we would, sure. do, uh, but we would off times. Not we, I don't think I did this, but a lot of the guys would complain. Ah, oh, this isn't very good. Or ah, oh. so one time the girls decided they were going to make brownies and replace the sugar with salt. Ugh. Sounds and awful. of course, the guys, they saw a play, you know, a pan of brownies. They went in there and started shoveling it in their face. And it took literally took them, you know, eight or nine bites before they're like, um, this, this isn't very good. And they taught them a lesson. So. Yeah. And no one wants to eat yucky <laughs> brownies. Yeah, brownies are good. You want to keep them good. But, yeah. But I think even about policy and also just being civil. Because we can have disagreements. What was it? Fifty-three men sat in a room and came up with our constitution, and they didn't all agree. There and was it's a lot all, of arguing, yeah. right? And it's okay for you to have the the con, the conversations and communicate and show respect. All of those things are really important politically to come to the best understanding and help your community. Yeah. uh, We're grateful right now. Hurricane is in good hands. And for at least another year and a half, Nanette will be the mayor. And you can watch these elections coming up this year and just kind of wipe your brow and say, I'm glad I'm not involved. So thank you, Nanette. Always great to talk to you today. Appreciate you, Andy. On this occasion, Memorial Park, Veterans Memorial Park in Hurricane. Target date, hopefully at least partially done September 11th uh, when we uh, honor the 9-11. Uh, people that Day. gave their lives yeah, and, and Veterans Day and uh, yeah, granite memorial. Very stuff. very cool thing that you're doing. And again, that uh, all the people who uh, stepped up and said, "Yeah, yeah. I want to, I want to help, to be a part of it." Thank very you. Cool. Thank you, Nanette. More Andy Griffin show tomorrow. Open line Friday. I can't believe it's already almost Friday. Thanks for listening, everybody. Happy summer solstice. The longest day of the year is today. Enjoy.